Okay, so then we come on to this idea of the comp uh, how confident we are. So when we talked again about uh, our measurements we made of the various characteristics of a population, or of a sample rather, the question was how confident could we be that they represented the population at large? Okay, so there's issues about our, uh, our experimental protocol, you know, measuring 10 people close to us, perhaps not doing proper randomization. Um, but we really, what we want to see is if we repeated our experiment we, using different, a different sample, a different group of people, how would the results differ? So if you imagine I went out and then found another 10 inhabitants of Tatooine, measured the various characteristics, weight, height, age, would I expect to get the same answer as I got in my first study? And if I went out and then did a third, and if we all went out, and I don't know how many of us there are, probably, I don't know, say 80, 70, 80, it's, gee, it must be around, yeah. Um, if we all went out and did an experiment like that, and then reported back, how much variation would there be in our basic descriptive statistics? So how much would our means vary? So if we all measured the, the height, and we came back and said, well, I measured a mean height of, 160 centimetres. Oh, I measured a mean height of 150. Oh, and then some of you tell me, well, you're wrong. Okay, well, that's your opinion. You go, well, actually, no, it's because we've all gone out, measured samples, still of only 10 people, but we've repeated the experiment multiple times. And then we can look, instead of looking at variation of the individual values, of the individual heights, we can now look at variation in the means of all of our experiments. So I'm just going to quickly try and demonstrate what I mean, because SPSS has this really neat um, sampling capability. So I can op open up a file. So now I've, um, I've got my data file there. Now this has got, uh, I think, 10,000, um, so I'm arbitrarily saying the population of Tatooine is 10,000 inhabitants. So this has got 10,000 values in there. Um, now I can now sample this data so it, that's like doing sev several different experiments. So I can remember in the videos online, I, I did this select cases to filter things out, but you can also random, so, uh, ram random sampling. Uh, so let's do it exactly. Uh, exactly 10 cases, and I'm going to say from the first 10,000, which is all of them. Hopefully that will work. Okay. And now if I press OK, you should see. You see down the side here that SPSS has crossed out a bunch of them because it's only selected 100 um, samples. Okay. Now the purpose of doing this is just to show you how the mean is going to change. So now if I go to analyze descriptive statistics and look at the descriptives, and just measure the height. I'm, I'm sticking with height for the moment, but this is, will work for the others. And again, the exercise was going to be that you'd, you'd look at how this works for other, other data sets. But if you look at my descriptive statistics, the one I'm interested in oh, is there you go, the mean. Okay, so that's um, 142 for that sample. And what I can then do, and what I would, I'd hope that you'd do, so now you just get to see it, um, is go back to data. If you'd all done this, we would have come up with 80 different values. So if I go to uh, s the sampling thing again, and just, yep, yeah, same, exactly the same, press OK, it will produce a new sample. And if I then go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives, you can see under Options, actually, I'll just show you what I can select. I'm only interested in the mean for now. So I'll just deselect all those. And it produces, again, another value. The mean of that set, data set, so 10 samples, is it 10? Oh, it's 10, yeah. 163. Um, so you see the mean has varied already, so the previous mean 
was 142, that one's 163. And we can do that over and over, and we'll see... I'll do one more, because I quite like doing this. I find it fascinating. You might not. OK, so that's come... Now, that, that's interesting, that's 164. So we've got 163, 164, and 142. And that doesn't mean the 142 is wrong. That's just what that sample returned as its mean. And there is a temptation when we do our research, when we get a value that perhaps seems a bit low, and we might call it, we say, well, that's an outlier, because it's not what I think it should be. Well, actually, that is just what it is. Unless you can exclude it, as we discussed last week, based on some real physical reason, like for cycling speed, it was stopping at traffic lights. Unless you actually have a good reason to exclude the data, that's your result. And you can't, you can't get rid of it because it doesn't give you the um, answer that you like. And so if we do that lots and lots of times, we build up a distribution of the means. OK. I'm, gonna, I'm afraid I will sit down because I'm going to drop this otherwise. OK, so let's go back to here. Now, often it's not practical to just go out and do lots and lots of experiments. There was a slight error in there that there was a risk of double counting. Yeah, so that's one of the things, actually, when you design an experiment, say if you're sampling a population, you want to make sure you're not asking the same person in every group. So, for example, uh, with height, let's say we've got someone who's actually eight foot tall but manages to get into every single one of our experiments, I don't know, either by chance or by purpose that would skew our results, because then we'd think that there was quite a few eight-foot people, but actually there's only one who's just got into 80 experiments. Um, but they, uh, all I was doing is randomly sampling the same data set, so each, each run was different. If you're taking samples from a, a, from a data set, you would expect that the mean will va vary between samples. Now, the population mean is set, so the population mean is what it is. And you can't change that. The sample mean, however, is dependent on your experiment and dependent on how many samples you measure. And that's where these things called confidence intervals come in. So if I've measured one sample, so I've just gone out, in my example, we've gone out, we've measured 10 people, 10, um, and we've measured their heights, and then we say, well, how representative is this? OK, well, we've controlled for things like randomly selected them. So let's say they're randomly selected, so we've got rid of that issue. Now, if I've just shown you that if I then went to the, to the population at large and pulled out several different samples of 10 people, I get different means. Bec and that's showing us that the mean varies within the samples. Now, it's often not convenient to go out and repeat that experiment multiple times. But fortunately, the normal distribution has a solution to this. Because of the mathematical properties of the normal distribution, we can then say, we can then produce these things called confidence intervals. And a confidence interval um, is based on what's called the standard error of the mean. Now, if you just backtrack, we took let's say you all went out and did these 10 people experiments, all came back with a mean, and we looked at how those means varied. If we take the standard deviation of your, each of your means, that is the standard error of the mean. That's all it is. It's, a, it's basically a standard deviation of lots of means. But we can estimate it from one sample. But it is just an estimate. So, and that's what a confidence interval is. So here you'll see that I've written mu, which is just, you'll see this around, it's, it's just shorthand for the mean. So mu there just means mean, okay? So if I talk about mu or say mu or you see it in a slide, I just mean the mean. SEOM is standard error of the mean. Some people will write SE for standard error. Some people will write SEM, standard error of the mean. So... Uh, let's say, say S, you might say S, dot E dot 
mean you might see SEM. Um, those are probably the most common variants. I tend to use SEOM, maybe to be unique. But again, with in the same way that we saw with the standard deviation, representing 95% um, or 95 percent of the data sitting between uh, two standard deviations, either side of the mean of a normal distribution, that then transfers to how means of all those experiments uh, are distributed. So then we say that 90, we can be 95 percent confident that our population mean, which we're trying to estimate from our sample, fits or falls within two standard, um, standard errors of the mean. I'm afraid terminology is a bit of a headache, and I will try to produce more and more examples of this until um, it makes some sense. When you come to a confidence interval, a confidence interval, or the standard error of the mean, is based Um, on the number of samples. And you can calculate it. I don't know if I bother putting the calculation up. But it's based on the square root of the number of samples. So it's the standard deviation divided by... Well, I'll put it up. Standard deviation is often represented by sigma. So if I write down the SEOM is equal to sigma over root n. So it's a standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. Okay. So if you increase your number of samples, you increase your confidence, which kind of makes sense. You'd expect if I measured more and more uh, people within this population, I would get closer to the population mean. I'd be more confident that my sample represents the, um, the actual population. Until that n goes to the size of the population, in which case this formula falls over slightly.